Congratulations on finishing your course. That was some hard work. Now what do I do with it? Is there anyone that will house my course and help me sell it? What if I can get an entire team to help me sell my course that I worked so hard on? Have I got a discovery for you? The Great Discovery not only has a place for your course, but a network of affiliates that are eager to sell your hard-earned course creation. Want to make a little more money so you can build your course or invest in yourself? Opportunities for all this and more await you at The Great Discovery. Or go to tuepodcast.net backslash discovery for more information. Once again, that's tuepodcast.net backslash discovery for more information about how to join The Great Discovery now. This is an Undiscovered Legacy production. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the great number 78. Right. I thought I was doing a good job by defining hours. And then recently, last week, I had to go into my calendar, take in, take day entire days out of the week, make sure that each day I wasn't scheduling too much. And that can be tricky because you want to be available for people, especially if it's important to be a good steward of the time of the people that, that, you know, folks who are giving you their time. Welcome to the Undiscovered Entrepreneur podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! Hello, Scoob Believers, and welcome to episode number 78 of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, Scoob, <laughs> coming at you at whatever device you happen to be listening on. Okay, so today's Scoob Believer of the Week. The Scoob Believer of the Week is an actually entire podcast called The Modular Pod. Now, The Modular Pod is a D&D action-packed podcast. Love these guys so much. They gave me a huge shot on their actual podcast so uh, this is kind of my way of saying thank you so much for being a school believer. And if you want to know anything about uh, this wonderful podcast, the Modular Podcast, and you're a D&D nerd like I am, check them out in the show notes. So today's entrepreneur is Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth started her podcast, the Dear Business Coach Podcast, only six months ago. Now, in this conversation, we actually talk about how we draw into how she draws inspiration from both business and performing arts literature. So like we read things that bring us inspiration and different type of thoughts. It doesn't have to be just about business books. It could be just about any kind of book that you listen to. Like I listen to my books that can bring you that flash, that moment of aha. And we talk a lot about that. We talk about the value of continuous learning through different classes, webinars, networking opportunities, that are actually free, that are out there for us to take advantage of. Especially when we're just getting started, we don't have a whole lot of money to work with. So we absorb whatever we can that's out there that we can get our hands on for free and then go from there. We also talk about how we believe in showcasing our processes rather than striving for perfection. Because, you know, when we talk about perfection, sometimes that could startle us and that could stop us from what we're doing because we're waiting for that perfect time or that perfect whatever it is that we're waiting for and it actually puts us behind. So we talk a lot about that. So today, let's listen to Elizabeth. Salutations, school believers, and we are here again with another amazing entrepreneur, brand new entrepreneur. Today, we're talking to Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hey. It's so great. Thank you for taking the time out to be in the Undiscovered Entrepreneur today. I, Undiscovered Entrepreneur today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this is really exciting. Thank you. Ah, absolutely. Now, I have one kind of semi-serious question to ask you before we get started. Okay, you ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. Are you a school believer? I am. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a school believer. I appreciate you, Elizabeth. So do me a favor here, and we're going to get started, and just tell me a little bit more about who you are, what your entrepreneur adventure is, and kind of how long you've been doing it for. Okay. So my name's Elizabeth Walker. I'm host and producer of the Dear Business Coach podcast and Walker Consulting Works. I've been in business technically for a little bit over half of a year since last November. And then my entrepreneurship journey I guess, starts now, even though you're going to ask me about the beginning last year. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's good. Get a good start. And you're going along there. It's, for, I've been listening to your podcast. It's been great. It's been awesome. And I was a guest on your podcast not too long ago. Yeah. And yeah, that yes. And so you had a chance to talk with me after I've had a little bit of practice. But yeah, it's still new. Fantastic. Everybody, and what's the name of the podcast again? The Dear Business Coach Podcast. Okay, so everybody, as soon as you're done listening to this, go subscribe over to that podcast, and we'll get you get some listeners, okay? Thank you. All right, for sure. So what I'd like to know here and start is, what kind of made you do this? I mean, what was the catalyst to get things started in your entrepreneur adventure? What happened in that instance? Um, a little bit out of frustration. I was feeling a little bit stuck. I had been thinking about something that would be a long-term business that would be fun for me to do day in and day out and achieve some personal goals. And I just sort of um, came up with a name really and put together a website and started playing around with uh, meeting some folks who would talk to me on Zoom, for example. And just started playing around with it. But when I say out of frustration, I mean, feeling like I had been wanting to start a business for a long time, but it's, you think, what, how do I do that? Capital? Do I need to involve a partner? Do I need to involve a customer base first? And podcast is how you can sit down with some equipment, free, free, free things online, like editing and recording, even free Zoom and get started. And that is what is so much fun about it. Awesome. It's good to have a plan. I could tell that you put a plan together before you implemented anything. I'm always about starting now, but starting now is actually making a plan, anything to move yourself forward to where you're going to get to, whether it's reading a book, whether it's contacting people like you did, like you contacted me, things of that nature. As long as you have something that's moving you forward, but you got to make sure you have some kind of steps that you take to be able to get to where you want to go. Tell me about this frustration. What was the frustration about? So feeling like in order to start a business, like you said, the word, you have to have a plan. And the word plan for some people, including myself, sounds like a very big, scary road to start down. So frustration meaning like, okay, so to start a business, I need to figure out how to, to, to build a business plan. And that didn't seem I would be able to do that just by myself sitting down with a piece of paper and some equipment. So that's why I say the podcast was what was, was the answer to what can I do right now to start exploring what I want to do with my business. And it turns out podcasting is a lot of fun and is something I want to stick with, like I said, for hopefully a very, very long time. Yeah, I hope so, too. This has been just a <laughs> blast for me, being able to meet all kinds of different kind of people around the whole world. I mean, I've interviewed people that were in Pakistan, in Australia, people I never would have thought I would even talk to coming forward and say, hey, I want to be a part of what you're doing. So I'm hoping you get that same experience. You're right. And it becomes very addictive when yes. you realize <laughs> that a podcast is not a way necessarily to curate a message or try to figure out like what an audience wants, but an opportunity for you or me to have access to talk to these really cool people all over the world. And that's exactly right, Jesse. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. When you were first getting started in your entrepreneur venture, some of the pitfalls and problems that you had getting started, what was, what was that like? So scheduling. So, so I'm sure I'm not the only person in the world who has a family and a schedule to take care of. 
and being able to figure out how to build one's personal schedule, right? So one of the things we think about as entrepreneurs is controlling our own schedule. That sounds like a dream come true. And yet the reality is you have your own family to take care of and things that are can't can't be negotiated. So it's wonderful to be able to control your own schedule, but it also means you all of a sudden have to be in control of your own schedule. That's why you can, involving your own business plan, right, means that I can figure out recording in the morning going to work, is recording on the weekends going to work. But ultimately, when you're talking to people all over the world, you find out that everybody, including yourself, I learned, has daily life things that we have to be responsible for. So it turns out that I also get to learn from people like yourself, like, how do, how do you do this? How do you juggle like a family and coming? up with a sustainable schedule that is going to turn into something profitable. When I say sustainable, I mean being consistent so that you can build a consistency for your audience too. Did that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, you're good there, Elizabeth. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what's really good about that is having the support of your family so they could help you set those boundaries for yourself so you could set aside that time that you have to do what you need to do for your entrepreneur adventure, especially when you're just getting started. Just tell them, hey, this in between this time, try not to bother me because I'm going to be doing this. That way, for a fact, you have that time set aside to be able to accomplish what you need to accomplish. So a lot of, especially what I do too, is setting really strong boundaries about what I'm doing and when I actually do it. Then having the self-discipline to actually do it when you say you're going to do it. Because now you don't have anybody looking over your shoulder saying, hey, you need to do it on this time and this day. Now you have to tell yourself, I have to do it on this time and this day. It's a little bit different from when you're going from a regular nine to five job to being your own boss or having your own business because you need to be able to sustain yourself and have those boundaries and have the discipline to set those boundaries for yourself. Yeah, it's not it's it's not easy and you do sometimes need help. I have an a, a business coach that I've been talking to who has to remind me of that. You'd be surprised, right? When I first started building my calendar, figuring out how to share my calendar with people, let them schedule appointments, I started to realize that the schedule that I started with was actually too loose. Right. I thought I was doing a good job by defining hours. And then recently last week, I had to go into my calendar, take and take day, entire days out of the week, make sure that each day I wasn't scheduling too much. And that can be tricky because you want to be available for people, especially if it's important to be a good steward of the time of the people that, that, you know, folks who are giving you their time. I want to say yes. I want to be available when they are. I don't want to miss a chance to talk to somebody really cool. And so it's really hard to stick to that schedule. But yeah, I had to recently actually reduce my hours to achieve the the quality of the my day-to-day -day function. Yeah. And you make a good point about saying yes, because you got to remember when you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And you want to keep that in mind too. But at the same time, when you're saying no to something, what are you saying yes to? It's really a thought process when you you don't want to say yes to everybody, everything. And yes, there's opportunities out there. And you don't want to miss an opportunity to have that FOMO, right? Feel of yeah. missing out. But at the same time, it goes right back into those boundaries. Is this yes going to fit into my boundary? If not, then I'm going to have to pass it and pass on it or schedule another time for it or something like that. So you make a good yeah. point. Now, as you're getting started here, you did you mention you have a coach, but do you have any influences or people that help you move forward or people that you look up to, mentors, virtual mentors count, anything like that? Yeah. So I have my notebook here with me, too, because I oh. have to <laughs> take notes when I'm listening and talking influences you said yes i do have a business coach a couple i actually i actually am kind of a nerd about getting involved in classes i have yet to get myself scheduled with you that is definitely a goal of mine to take advantage of your coaching and you also have a class that i want to go to about selling courses 
And that's kind of my nerdy sweet spot. And it's really another thing that's hard for me to say no to is when I see a class or a webinar or a master class that I want to attend, it's really hard to not just sign up for stuff. So, so, but, but, but overall long time, I, when I was a teenager, I started getting into that cheesy self-help section at the bookstore. <laughs> you can make fun of me all day long for it if you want, but, you know, I started out getting in, interested in performing arts as a, as a and business as a high schooler and a college student, and I would spend a lot of time reading, reading from people who are masters at performing arts and treating it like a business. So why am I telling you all of this seemingly not related stuff? Because speaking, the power of speaking, the power of presenting is essentially what the Dear Business Coach podcast and my Walker Consulting Works LLC is all about. Using the mic, using your voice, the power of conversation and learning how to become a communicator because I'm not great at that. I, I'm constantly here every day talking to people like you to learn that fast I'm fascinated with performing arts and be and and business as an interdisciplinary study for that reason so I was reading a lot of books from people like Stella Adler she's a famous acting coach another let's see what's what's the another one of my favorite authors would have would have been a Robert Key because he was had a big I guess franchise might be the right word when his books were hot um, when I was that age talking about business and moving between like being an being an employee versus an entrepreneur versus an investor versus a business person and so those roles are so different and if you take some of the some of the real in-depth studying of performing ar performance artists, right? And some of the best in the business. It's 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 kind of a very introspective, a very introspective journey, right? You can even say philosophical, but what do performers do and business people do is learn how to uh, study the basis of your communication. When you are one-on-one -on -one with somebody like we are right now, how are you learning how to be an active listener? How are you learning how to be in the moment with somebody? And, and that works in business when you are helping someone find a solution to a problem if it's your customer. And so these two skill sets are not very far apart. And I'm fascinated with the folks who can master this. So anyway, I'm not the master at that, but I am constantly looking for workshops and classes and opportunities to practice this skill set. What's funny is you say that and you say these things are not related, but <laughs> I got to tell you, they are. They're very much related. You're not you're just reading all this information and, and gathering all this information just because you can. It's because you're incorporating into what you're actually trying to accomplish. And when you're doing that, these things do become related because you take the best things of what you've read. I like how that sounds. Oh, yeah, I can incorporate that into what I'm doing and turn it into your own. So even though you on the outside, it may not seem like these things are related, but they in your own mind and in what you're trying to accomplish they really really are so I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's even though it sounds like maybe if somebody that's maybe not an entrepreneur or not thinking about it it might not be related i think all those things are related we have the story brand we have the things that we will we want to be able to tell our stories effectively and in one way shape or form it's kind of like acting Right. So we read these books about acting and how we come across to our audience and things like that. So when we're up maybe on stage speaking, we can relay that information in a very story like fashion. Right. Yeah. So, and, and we love stories. We're human. We love stories. And the more effective you could tell this story about what you're trying to accomplish, the better you're going to come across your audience. I hope so. No, I know so. There's no hope about it, really. And another thing, too, is being a communicator is important. But I got to tell you, the more you're podcasting, 
this this accidentally turned into a coaching. Sorry. So <laughs> the more you're That's podcasting, the more you're going to realize that your community one on one communication with people outside of podcasting is going to improve. I got to tell you, the the communication between me and my son and me and my wife has exponentially gotten better. It's improved a lot of my quality of being able to understand people because I know how to listen now and I know how to respond to where they know that I'm hearing them. So as that's going on, I mean, I've been doing this for over three years now. I could feel myself being able to understand people easier because I know how to, I learned through podcasting, talking to wonderful people like you, Elizabeth, how to communicate and give the person a chance to speak before and take in what they're saying before actually saying what I have to say to them. And going back and forth that way has been a lot. It's been absolutely beneficial. So keep that in and, mind. And, and it's fun. Sure. And it's fun. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot more fun when you, when you can actually understand what they're saying. I've learned not to break in. I've learned not to interrupt. That was one of my worst things. I was a bad interrupter for the longest time. So I've learned now to... If I feel like I'm going to interrupt, I could stop myself because I feel it's going to happen. If you could stop yourself from interrupting and feeling it's going to, you're about to interrupt and actually mentally, wait, you're going to say something, stop. Let them finish first so you hear everything that they have to say before you have to say, because you might miss something. You might, you might miss that piece of the puzzle that's going to make them more frustrated because you didn't give them a chance to get it out. Yeah. So give people the opportunity to finish what they have to say before you speak because you'll have a better opportunity to have them understand that you're listening to them. Okay. That was fun. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything more to say about that, Elizabeth? It's it's not as easy as it sounds, right? Because even Ooh. right now as we're talking, you you know, I it is my job in this situation to to think about being in the spotlight for your podcast, but if I'm not careful, I won't hear what your question is. So, every time I speak with somebody, I still have to have a notebook with me and I, I you know, I always tell people at the beginning of my interview, <laughs> yeah, my notebook yeah. and there goes my pencil. So part of the part of the challenge there for me, right, is what's happening for me right now. I've taken me a minute to find my words. I I've I, sl I could get off track really quickly if I'm not careful. I'm saying quite a bit because I don't have a lot of practice. So I was listening to you. I heard, I, I wasn't thinking about what I was going to say next. And then what happened is there was a moment of silence, a little bit of a hiccup. I've, I'm afraid that I don't look like I'm ready or I'm afraid I don't look like I know what I'm talking about. But that's what happens when I'm listening, right? Is there is going to be a little bit of awkwardness, but hopefully through training and classes and practicing, we can get better at this. And so I think that you understand the art of that because you are very good at that, Jesse. Now that I've spoken with you a couple of times, you are a master at that. And it does feel like you are genuinely listening to me. And it's it makes the other person feel ready to open up. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's all. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment, Elizabeth. That's awesome. Thank you. I do my best. Okay. <laughs> The next thing, one of my favorite questions here, and I get a different answer from everybody. Every single time it's a different answer. But when will you know you've made it? When will you think you've gotten to that point where you say, this is exactly where I want to be. This is what I was hoping for. What's that look like to you, Elizabeth? I've heard you ask your, in, your interviewees this, right? And the cheesy answer is right now, this is a lot of fun for me. Being invited to be on a podcast is actually really, really flattering and was not something I anticipated when I started the podcast. So this is an opportunity to practice speaking. And that's not something I, I would say is the, the turnaround time as far as starting a podcast and then all of a sudden having 
the opportunity to be involved like this, where all of a sudden I get to be the speaker and have practice doing that too. And in a lot of in a lot of traditional job settings, you spend so much time just watching other people work and waiting for your chance to speak up in a team meeting or something that being able to dive in like this and be invited to to a project or a collaboration or a live or a podcast interview really, really makes you live by the things you're preaching, I guess. So this is the best part is finding out that the, physically what you do every day with your time is the thing that you enjoy doing, right? So it's not about I have a national sponsorship ad on my podcast. That would be great. It would make me sound fancy. But I hope to always keep sight of the fact that sitting down literally at my computer or with a guest or with a a colleague and having the time and the space to talk with each other and learn from each other is the thing I don't want to lose, right? That's the whole point. So this is this is what I enjoy doing the most. When will I know that I've made it? Let's see. I don't know. Can I book a, a seminar or workshop and do three or four of those in a row and sell them out? That would look really good. That would feel really great. I would really like to have the folks that are speakers at my workshops create more customers and business out of meeting people at my events. That would feel fantastic. So I hope we're on the path to that. You are. Okay. <laughs> you are. You are. This is the way to start because this is the same way I started too. I'm right now I'm actually looking to book some events myself for me. But yeah, this is the way to do it. You're on the right track for it. And it's good to hear that this is that you have a, some kind of end goal in mind while you're doing this because then what are we doing it for? Hmm. Right? If we don't have an we don't have an end goal in mind, then we kind of don't have a direction to go. How do I get to the end goal and then work your way backwards to get to that end goal? Okay, for if I were good to get here, then one step back from that is I have to contact this person. One step back from that I have to start a podcast and then just kind of make a kind of a trail for yourself so you know how to get to the to the castle at the end of the trail whatever you want to call it I'm, you know. but yeah that's great that's awesome we all have that kind of thought process too but having that end goal in mind is really really important i'm glad you actually have that for yourself so if you were to meet somebody just starting out their entrepreneur adventure, very similar to you. What advice would you give them? What kind of steps would you have them take? You you were like the third person this week that I've had a chance to think about this with and not because, not because of anything other than I think this week has brought me a couple of people like yourself who are just interested in these looking in the rear view mirror kind of ideas a little bit. And I had an opportunity to answer this question about what would you tell your younger self? And I'm going to take that same version of the question and apply it here. And if if I have to tell an entrepreneur starting out, I would say in light of this conversation that we're having now about having a plan and how helpful that is, kind of like when you're in school and I would tell, I would tell my daughter, for example, don't worry so much about what it is important to have a goal as far as far as a major and a job field and things like that but study what you're interested in take the classes you're interested in now's the time to explore the teachers you like physically what are those classes you enjoy being in um for example she had signed up for a camp last summer and uh had the opportunity to go to a class related to that camp before going to camp and realized the classwork she thought was not really that exciting and decided not to go to that camp. And I said, you know what? I'm really proud of you. And the same kind of thing for starting an entrepreneurship journey. I said a few minutes ago, I'm really kind of a nerd about signing up for webinars and things like that. Go for it. Take advantage of all of the free webinars you can find. If you're in a place right now where you really don't have a schedule and you're trying to figure it out, all of these free classes and webinars that we can find on LinkedIn, um, that we can find on Eventbrite 
or go to individuals like yourself who are creating events and ask to be invited. Remember to tell people, hey, put me on your invite list. I may not be able to go to every every little webinar, but I want to know about your events. And so you you can really you find out people in your industry who are really open to talking to you and want you want you to succeed and you just never know who you'll meet so so when i said business coach i i do have a business coach that i'm working with for a few sessions right now but that 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 process also comes with all kinds of fun like access to group calls and access to other friends in that group who I get to sit with and listen to their business journeys so when you go to these when you go to these free classes and free meetups and things online you also get to learn from other people who are toying with ideas and brainstorming so it is a little secret tool to to jump in on anything that you can find that's interesting to you. So you don't have to worry about I got to I've got to have a marketing class, a finance class, a bookkeeping class. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that if it's if if it's free and you can put your name and your email address in and get involved, do it. And if you decide to clean out your email box tomorrow and change your mind, hey, it was a free resource. <laughs> That's right. A lot of that of what you said just now also coincides with finding your zone of genius. Knowing what your zone of genius is will comp- will give you that guidance of what you want to study, what you actually love, so you can know where to find those things because – and narrowing down your zone of genius will give you an opportunity to say, this is what I need. This is what I need. Not, I wonder if I need that. Or maybe I could use that or something like that. It kind of it kind of narrows it down to where if it's something that you love to do that you don't mind doing for free, then you know that it's going to it's going to amplify what you love. And if you amplify what you love and then start studying about what you love then it all just comes together. And then it also takes away the stuff that you don't love. It takes away the things that are kind of maybe shiny. Oh, that's kind of neat. But does that fit in my zone of genius? Maybe not. Maybe maybe later. But right now, I want to concentrate on this because I love this much more. So finding your zone of genius and saying, like you said, get those things, even if those free, those free things that you can go out and find, Incorporate that into your zone of genius, mix it up and see what happens. Yes. And surprise, surprise, you're also going to find followers for your content in the process. Because if you're there and sharing yourself every time you pipe up in a free webinar and say, hi, my name's Elizabeth. I'm your business coach podcast. I'm here to learn and network. It's my first time to this group or this class. People listen and they say, oh, she has a podcast. Let me check it out. And so little little trips, tricks and tips like that, too. Yeah, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I know it's kind of rough at first, especially if you're an introvert. I'm a totally extrovert, so I can't talk too much about <laughs> introversion. But sometimes it can be difficult to put yourself out there, to put your face out there, to put your voice out there and say, hey, look at me. I'm trying to bring attention to myself when you're really not used to doing something like that. But you kind of have to do it in, in today's in today's age, because if you don't do that, nobody's going to know you're there unless you speak up and say something. Right. So I would also say that one of the big conversations right now is how important video is. And I can certainly tell you, I don't really want to be on video myself exactly. In fact, if you look at the Dear Business Coach podcast clips on the website. There's the Dear Business Coach podcast groups on LinkedIn and Facebook, where you can find all the reels that I post every week for each guest. You'll see that there's really no video of me, which is by design, right? Because I want to showcase the guest. Um, But also this whole process of getting comfortable in front of the camera, going back to using free resources and whatever you have in front of you um, is and the advice from my business coach right now, he's saying, it, remember that it, you're not trying to be perfect, right? We want to be 
good enough for whatever that means for you. So the point of what I'm saying here is, okay, we have a webinar camera. It's not great. Like I'm looking at my image right now. I don't really like it. Not because I am so concerned about if my makeup's okay, but it's kind of blurry. The light's weird. I'm never going to get that exactly right. I'm not a professional at that, but it's good enough, right? For me to feel comfortable to talk to you. So it's more important in my opinion that I'm not so distracted by what does my hair look like on the camera? Just can, are you comfortable with your equipment? I know I can hear you and Jesse, I can trust is going to make me look fantastic on camera. So I just let you do the magic, <laughs> right? And just sort of create a safe space here where I feel comfortable just sitting down at my desk and talking to someone without a whole lot of, okay, is this okay? Is everything fine? Just kind of getting used to being not perfect. The whole point is to not have it exactly right. The whole point is to build the content and are you getting better at your message? And so I hope that's what I'm doing here with you today. This is pra <laughs> not practice, but you know I am taking it as an opportunity to get better, I hope. <laughs> sure. And it will get better as time goes on. We don't want to be perfect, especially in this day and age too. This is going to get kind of a, a tangent. So I'm, I'm sorry. But Please. the the less perfect you really are, the better off you're going to be because the more perfect you are, everybody's going to think it's AI. Yeah. Right? So you're you're seeing especially within the last probably about year, year and a half, people actually are gravitating towards content that's not perfect mm -hmm. because they know that that's real. They know it's authentic. They know that this is a real person that's putting this together. And not AI. There's no way we can AI what we're doing here. <laughs> right? There's no way. Now, we can AI tools like getting our show notes and things like that. But if we were AI right now, we'd be a lot more static. There'd be mm -hmm. a lot less personality. Your hair would be 100% perfect. And I have to have this thing going, <laughs> which is perfect, right? We don't. I don't believe in that anymore. As much as I want to believe in AI... I am an advocate for AI for tools, but when it comes to person to person, human touch, I, I, I just can't go with that. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. <laughs> but it's okay not to be perfect. Actually, I almost prefer it that way because it means you're authentic. It means you're real. You're a, you're a person. You're a person that is worried about more about getting the information out there getting the the person to listen and understand what your what your process is and what you're trying to do over am I perfect it's what do they call that paralysis by analysis right because if you that's try to get too perfect you're not going to do anything that's right right that's what you told me that I had about my editing <laughs> yes during our conversation that's right <laughs> But it doesn't just go with editing. It goes with a lot of other things around what we're doing here, too. School believers well, I am going to interrupt you, actually, because you you said something I wrote down here. What you know, what's your process? And that's what you're sharing with people like you asked me at the beginning of the interview. If I'm a school believer. Right. And we talked about that, that it's you you are specifically trying to show or I'm interpreting that you're trying to show your audience, Jesse, your process. Right. So we're even talking about our processes now on the interview. And one of my favorite interviews on the Dear Business Coach podcast is with Cynthia Rhodes Porter. She was actually maybe my second or third conversation. And um, she talks about the process, what your process of building a product or services is, is really what you're bringing to the table when you're asking an investor to come along with you, when you're asking a customer to buy into you, right? It's not so much that you're necessarily showing that you have the best of the best product or something, but the process that you have is unique to bring an idea from from thought to something usable for the end user. And that process is actually what people are need to see. And that's in fact, in fact, what Cynthia Rhodes Porter says an investor needs to see is what is your process? So that's actually pretty fascinating that you just said that right here, Jesse, because you're making me think about 
what does your audience like about you? And what do I like about my favorite podcasts and people that I follow is I get to see how the sausage is made, right? You let me in a little bit on your process and I feel smarter. I feel one step ahead of the game or something, if you will, by listening to you, just by being around your content. So being able to show somebody your process is a really fascinating skill as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for all that. And let's let's link that interview into my show notes for Cynthia. Okay. We'll put, put that in the show notes. So if anyone wants to hear about that, we can have them take a listen to that. Okay. Cool. I appreciate those kind of words, Elizabeth. Thank you. You're making I think you've made me blush like three times this Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't tell because I'm practicing looking into the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I try it sometimes down, sometimes up, sometimes down. I don't know. It's I'm working on it. But hey, at School Believers, I want to make sure that you go to the YouTube so you can see Elizabeth. Because <laughs> I want her to start getting comfortable with being able to, to, to actually be seen as a person <laughs> on the screen. So she can get used to that. So I'm going <laughs> to put that in there. Okay. Here is my absolute favorite question, but I did kind of steal this from another podcast. So sorry, everybody. <laughs> what is one question you wish I would have asked you, but didn't? I always have missed one real question, good question that people are ready to answer. And I never ask that question. So what is that one question, Elizabeth? I knew you were going to ask me this and I'm not ready. <laughs> so let me think for a second. Conversation, right? So when you uh one let's see what would you, what what is the question that you would ask me that you haven't asked me um so when when people well first of all right when people find me on linkedin or the dear business coach podcast then the first thing i want to know is who are you what are you working on and what excites you about your business because i do want to hear from my audience members so the conversation right so how so how can people get involved in the Dear Business Coach podcast and how can people use what is the Dear Business Coach podcast hopefully bringing that you can take take into your, to the, what can my audience take to their work life right away? And that would be coming to my live events on LinkedIn. I have live events on Monday mornings that you can meet with me personally. You can listen to me speak about podcasting, the power of podcasting, and get access to events that are coming up. And that is access that's accessible to you on the Dear Business Coach Podcast.com forward slash live. And if you're a subscriber, then you can also receive those individual links to the Monday morning events in your email. So please join me on those live events at my LinkedIn page. That's the handle is Elizabeth Walker at work on LinkedIn. And so Monday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time is when you can talk with me personally and learn some more about behind the scenes with the Dear Business Coach podcast too. And that was at the Dear Business Coach, what was it again? Dot com slash live? Yeah. Okay, good. We'll, make, we'll link that in the show notes too. So if anybody wants to go join you in that, Elizabeth, we'll have them link that up, okay? All right. All right. Thank you for answering the question. I didn't know I was going to ask you. <laughs> all right. You might have to edit that one a little bit. <laughs> ah, that's okay. That's what it's all about, right? Actually, I had one person that almost took two minutes that I okay. that definitely had. So that was actually a lot faster than some others I've had. So you're okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what I like to do with all my guests is to find a six-month goal for yourself. So where do you see you and your company in the next six months, Elizabeth? Let's see. So it's June. And in the next six months, I will have produced and complete completed execution on my first workshop here in Roanoke, Virginia. So when you come back to me six months from now, I hope we had a blast and this workshop was a success. So here in Roanoke, Virginia, I have the Power of Laughter, a masterclass with Clayton Fletcher, which is on October 18th at the Jefferson Center, which is a historical performing arts center building here in lovely downtown Roanoke, Virginia. And so this is my uh, first workshop that I'm producing and hosting. 
And so let's fill those seats. I want it to be really exciting, but more importantly, I want the the folks that come to my event to have a blast. Excellent. Anything else? We'll start with that. I want to focus on one thing at a time. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cool. So what I'd like to do with you, Elizabeth, and it's six months, I actually want to do a follow-up interview with you just like this one. And I want to see if you've reached those goals. Is that okay? That would be great. Fantastic. So now you're accountable to me and an entire audience. Okay. (laughs) Good. No pressure. No pressure. (laughs) All right, Elizabeth, this is your time to shine. This is the time I want you to advertise yourself. Tell us how we get a hold of all your great information. Whatever you want to do to advertise yourself, this is the time. Okay. Ready, set, go. Dear Business Coach Podcast.com. Become an email subscriber for updates to the live events on Monday mornings, as well as dedicated emails for episodes with guests and producer notes. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being an undiscovered entrepreneur. It's been an absolute blast. We got a lot of information for the scoop believers out there and you, I think you look great. I just want to tell you, (laughs) you look great. Okay. So thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much. This is great. All right. All right, school believers, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. All right, everybody have a great day. Bye bye. <laughs>school believers that was elizabeth what a great interview she is just awesome i really like talking with her and going through the things that we went through putting a plan together scheduling things having support having boundaries what yes means what no means when you say yes and what yes what do you say yes to and say you know what i'm talking about yeah it's been amazing i love the fact that she goes through performing arts and incorporates that into her her speaking i think because it is kind of art if you remember i talked to a late dennis millen and who was a very famous actor and it's amazing how acting and even musicians have an entrepreneur adventure just like all of us do and it's very similar so if we actually take the time to look at it at entrepreneurship the way they do We could probably learn something from that. We went into the zone of genius. That was something I always like talking about. If you've listened to my podcasts, you know how that works. And not being perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be able to do what what we do here. There's nothing perfect about what we do. We have our glips. We have our bloopers. You know, right? We all have problems. But don't be so worried about how perfect it is. Just do something. And that's a lot of what I talk about. I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing today. We have to do something to move forward. Otherwise, we're not doing anything at all. If we're so worried about being perfect and we don't want to do anything until it's perfect, we're not going to do anything. That's just really how how it is. And that's the way it's going to go. Make sure you go see her on LinkedIn and check out her live events. And we'll have the link to that in the show notes. All right. So a little bit more about what I'm working on and things that are happening with me. I have decided that I'm going to start saving up money to go to PodFest. Yes, we're talking about PodFest again, trying to actually get out this year. Last year, we didn't get a chance to go, but we're really, really super close to going. We're all set to go, and it just didn't quite work out. So I figure now this year, since we got so close last year, this year we're actually going to get out there. I'm already I'm already starting to put flights together and try to work the budgets out, but I need your help. So I'm putting more stuff together out than I ever have before for you to take a look at, see if you're interested in. I also am starting to do some services. I'm still doing coaching. I'm still doing editing for other podcasts. Whatever I need to do to get out to PodFest because that's where I need to be to make this show go anywhere else. So that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about right now today is just asking for help to get out to PodFest. All right, school believers, thank you for another episode, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>
tune in in two weeks to listen to another brand new entrepreneur. And remember, I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing it today. Do you find yourself faltering when speaking in public? You definitely know what you're talking about, but you just can't seem to get over the horrific fear and imagining people in their underwear is just not working. Whether you're gearing up for a big presentation or just looking to improve your daily communications, Leslie Friorenzo is your go-to resource for mastering self-promotion, facing your audience fearlessly, and communicating with authority. Don't miss out on your opportunity to elevate your game. Contact Leslie Friorenzo now or go to tuepodcast.net backslash speak to step into the spotlight with confidence. Your adventure and public speaking mastery starts here and now. Don't wait to get your voice heard. Book your free consultation at tuepodcast.net backslash speak to start your adventure in speaking excellence today.